Now, before the lesson begins, be sure to check the description for links to additional resources, such as my free music theory roadmap and daily diet of practice activities. First, let's review these concepts introduced in the primer level. You can pause the video and do these activities on your own, or just join me now. First, let's find the treble clef, or the G clef. Here's the treble clef, also called the G clef. I think it's more important to think of it as the G clef because what it tells us is that the second line from the bottom is G. See how it swirls around that second line? It tells us that that is a G. So where is that treble clef G? If you put your right hand thumb on middle C, giving each finger a white key, your pinky is on treble clef G. Next, let's find the bass clef. Bass clef is down here. Bass clef is also called the F clef. It tells us that the fourth line from the bottom is an F. The scroll of the clef starts on the fourth line. These dots are above and below the fourth line. So where is bass clef F? Well, if you put your left hand thumb on middle C, give each finger a white key, then your pinky is on bass clef F. Next, we have two dynamic marks. Dynamic marks are how loud or soft you're going to play. These dynamic marks are mezzo forte and piano. Mezzo forte means moderately loud, medium loud, and piano means soft. Our first dynamic mark is in measure one, mezzo forte. So, do we have any others? <laughs> ah, there's one. Here in measure 13 is a piano dynamic. Another one in measure 15. Back to mezzo forte. Remember that mezzo forte is louder than you think. So use firm fingertips and arm weight to get a nice tone. Also, you want to be sure that your mezzo forte is loud enough. So when you have to get softer, you've got somewhere to go. Next, we have the time signature. Time signature is found at the beginning of a piece, just after the clef. We got two numbers stacked on top of one another. Top number always means the number of counts per measure, and the bottom number is the kind of note that gets the count. So here, we should have four quarter notes per measure. The four at the bottom means a quarter note gets the count. One, two, how many quarter notes are in a half note? Two, so three, four. There's four quarter note counts in this measure. Same with this one here. It's all quarter notes and we can see that. Now let's play and count through the song. We're gonna establish a steady beat and feel the quarter note pulse. We're gonna count aloud anything longer than a quarter note. Our counting can sound like this. We can either start counting on the note, like this. One, two. One, two. And so on. Another way to do it is to feel the quarter notes and feel that first count and only count the second out loud. If you find that you're stumbling to start counting right when you play the note, you might adopt this method. Two. Two. So on. There are, of course, many ways to count, but this will do fine for now. Okay, setting up to find our first notes. Our first note here is on the second line of the treble staff. Remember, that is treble clef G. So fifth finger, right hand will be on treble clef G. Where does the left hand come in? Ah, here's the left hand. Left hand coming in at the end of the first line here. Now, this note is not on the fourth line, which is our base F. It is one step up. So what is one step up from F? G. That's where our first finger of our left hand is gonna go. 
Okay, so establish a nice steady pulse and then count aloud. One, two, ready, go. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. two. Another way to practice is to name the notes as you play. G, G, E, F, F, D, E, E, C, E, D, D, G. Keep your eyes on the page. Name the note first and then play it. Next we come to transposing. Transposing is when you look at the notes on the page, but play different keys on the piano. So Firefly is written in the C five finger scale, but we're going to play it now in the G five finger scale. Instead of reading note names, you look at how you get from one note to the next. Your options are a repeat, skips up or down, steps up or down, then lastly, finger numbers. So let's find our G five finger scale. And now we're gonna read, how do we get from one note to the next? Well, I start on finger five, not a G as on the page, but a D as is in our G five finger scale. So we play, repeat, skip down, step up, repeat, skip down, up, repeat, skip down, skip up, step down, repeat to the left hand one, which is gonna be on D instead of G. So as we're looking at our notes in this different manner, we can kind of pull our vision back a little bit and look at some larger uh, patterns. For example, here at five and six, we're alternating notes, right hand, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. But what is happening in each hand? Well, the left hand is all the same note, but the right hand is just stepping up the five finger scale. So we can think about it like that and easily transpose it to any other five finger scale. Then we're on to the left hand, first finger. Skipping down, up, repeat. Skipping down, up, skip. Skip, skip. If you found that helpful, please like and subscribe and download my music theory roadmap by clicking the link in the description. But stick around because I'm going to play the teacher duet for you. Remember that you gotta move your hands up an octave. And if this is too fast, you can slow down the playback in the settings icon. One, two, ready, go.
Good luck with your practice. I'd like to see you on the next one.